Hello, and welcome to the third installment of our Scleroderma series. If you have not already seen the first two videos in the series, Breaking Down Scleroderma and Treatment and Management for Scleroderma Patients, check out the links below as they provide us with a brief background of this autoimmune disease. A key point that was previously mentioned is that scleroderma is the result of the overproduction of collagen which can affect those afflicted in different ways. This requires the treatment to be very personalized to the individual and must take into account factors such as type, severity, disease progression, and patient's age. In this video, we will be discussing the importance of proper nutrition for individuals who have scleroderma. Why talk about the digestive system? Well, it is the most commonly affected system after the skin in an individual with scleroderma. There are a number of gastrointestinal symptoms associated with the disease and each one has a different treatment. Although there is no diet for reducing the collagen that affects the afflicted patient, there are certainly dietary plans that can help temporarily relieve and manage symptoms. This includes eating proper proportions, reducing food intake with inflammatory properties, and eating foods which can help increase energy and decrease gastrointestinal symptoms. In order to prevent symptoms of malnutrition, scleroderma patients are encouraged to eat small portions of low fiber, low fat, and a high liquid content. Individuals exhibiting poor absorption and have a hard time swallowing and chewing their food have an inadequate intake of nutrients. They may be referred to a registered dietitian to receive medical nutritional therapy to promote a high-calorie, high-protein diet. A more severe intervention is parenteral nutrition, an intravenous feeding method where a feeding tube is inserted into a large vein. Unfortunately, although a patient may see improvement in their condition, due to the severe nature of this disease, it would be very hard to cure malnutrition, and as such, patients should be constantly monitoring their weight and implementing a proper nutritional plan. Scleroderma patients experiencing oxidative stress will have faster disease progression. Oxidative stress is the result of free radicals, which are molecules that damage cells in the body. Antioxidants help combat the damages done by these free radicals. In order to increase antioxidant intake, patients should eat dark-colored fruits such as blueberries and dark-colored grapes, as well as vegetables. They are also encouraged to eat omega-3 fatty acid-rich foods like flax seeds and to eat vitamin E-rich foods like various nuts. When the disease is in the active phase, symptoms of fatigue and reduced energy levels are common. In many cases, fatigue onset in scleroderma is often gradual, as the body becomes less capable of using energy for everyday activities, because some of this energy is used by the body in an attempt to heal itself. In order to combat this, it is recommended to eat several small meals a day in order to maintain consistent energy levels. In addition, low iron levels may be a contributing factor to fatigue and it is recommended that fatigue sufferers discuss additional iron supplementation with their doctors. Another way to reduce the symptoms associated with scleroderma is to improve digestive problems through various means. For different symptoms along the digestive tract, there are certain treatments that can be followed. In order to avoid gastroesophageal reflux disease, it is recommended that acidic foods like fats, chocolate, and coffee are avoided. There are also certain medications that improve the motility of the gut muscle called prokinetic medications. Another digestive symptom that can occur is bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine which can be treated by a course of antibiotics. Treatment for constipation in the large intestine is the administration of laxatives. Overall, what is consumed on a day-to-day -day basis is what will affect digestive symptoms the most. Ultimately, scleroderma affects several aspects of the digestive system through the hardening of the tissues. This results in gastrointestinal problems which can be mitigated through nutritional avenues. First, it is important for patients to prevent malnutrition by adjusting their diet through medical nutrition therapy intervention practices or parenteral nutrition methods. Second, patients can reduce inflammation through high antioxidant intake. Third, it is important for patients to increase their energy and decrease their fatigue which can be addressed by eating frequent small meals and taking iron supplements. And lastly, patients can improve their overall digestion by reducing acidic food intake and treating constipation and digestion issues on an as-needed basis. Remember, addressing nutritional problems is not a means of treatment for scleroderma patients but a matter of reducing associated symptoms and improving the overall well-being of the individual. For more information on how to eat with scleroderma, check out the description below. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the Demystifying Medicine series.